Hello everyone, I'm Marco Mepe and I'm Marian Corcho and welcome, welcome to, to Radic Forensics. Forensics. In today's tutorial, we will go over the basics of collecting fingerprints and its importance in crime prosecution. First of all, what are fingerprints important? Well, you might be questioning why in the world are fingerprints important just below unlocking your laptop or your phone. Actually, fingerprints can be used to identify an individual or a perpetrator in the context of crimes since their fingerprints are all input in a database that then can be compared to the fingerprints that are found in the crime scene. And since your fingerprints do not change throughout your life, you better not commit a crimes when they got your fingerprints because they will find you. They also happen to be the most commonly collected type of evidence. This is not a coincidence. You leave fingerprints in everything you touch. Think about it. You're constantly touching things with your hand, whether it's walls, your phone, or even another person. Yes, you left fingerprints there. But wait a moment. If you can't see them, how are they there? Excellent question. You cannot see them because they're latent fingerprints. Latent fingerprints are made of oils and sweat that are pressing on your fingertips, and they leave an invisible mark on any solid surface that you touch. Crime scene technicians hunt them down using different types of powders that adhere to this oil and those sweat present in your fingertips. Then they can collect them and send them to the lab for later comparison. To collect fingerprints this way, you will need a surface where the fingerprint will be created, a black powder, a brush, and not judge them. The dirtier they look, the better they work. A tape to collect the results, a surface that offers contrast, and of course, a finger. Let's begin by cleaning this glass surface to ensure we only get my fingerprints and nothing else. I'm going to use a clean brush to show you the movement you need to follow. We're going to do circular motions that gently reach the surface and bounce back. Remember, you don't want to just brush over the fingerprint or aggressively tap it. Fingerprints are very sensitive and once you damage them, there is not coming back. Circular motions up and down and you'll be fine. That will be perfect. Moving on to the powder, you add powder by gently tapping the brush on the container, like this. This exact same process can be used with any other type of powder, like white powder or even fluorescent powder. What always remains the same is being careful of how much powder you add. To get rid of the excess powder, gently tap the brush with your finger or in the edge of the container. Either way, it's perfect. Enough with the warning, just do it already. Wait, this is a moment of caution. Remember, circular motion. Well, here we go. Up and down. Yep. And I think that will be enough. Just there. This is where you stop. Remember, you don't want to add more powder once the fingerprint has revealed itself. Now that your fingerprint looks as pretty as mine, which I doubt, get your collecting tape. Collecting tape is very different from regular tape. It is a little bit thicker and doesn't leave glue marks when you tear it apart. You one section and oops, <laughs> in this case I got two by accident, but don't worry, I'll be saving that one for later. The way you use collecting tape is by making an anchor point in the corner of the glass, like this. Uh, Marco, you have the tape backwards. Oh yeah, I'm sorry, mm, whatever. Make an anchor point in the corner by placing it like so. Now you're going to move your finger across the fingerprint. This is a very important part. You want to get rid of all the bubbles, so maybe tap a little bit. Pressure a little bit around. Hey, but remember, this only works if you're using collecting tape. If you use regular tape, it works differently. Yes, that's right. Now that no bubbles are left behind, you can remove your tape. Very gentle. Do it from the corner very smoothly, and you don't want to do it just at once. Like so. Perfect. Now that you have lifted your first fingerprint, look for a surface that offers contrast. In this case, I'll use white. And to put it here, it will be the same thing. Use your finger as an anchor point in the corner and swipe over it, just like that. We're going to push a little bit with our fingers the same way you did when you were on the glass and make sure that no bubbles are left behind. That's the main point. Mm -hmm. Yes, this will be perfect. Now that I'm happy with the results, I can just take it, the excess tape, I can bend it over like this. Yeah, make sure that it's just pretty and it won't stick on anything. <laughs> And that's all. 
And there you have it, your first fingerprint. Oh, I'm so proud. We made this. I know. I'm sorry. I didn't mean it. As always, we hope this makes helps you become a better crime scene technician in the future. Don't forget to like and subscribe.